Good morning, everyone, from this humble abode. We're gonna have some tea this morning and then get our day started. Good morning from Chinatown. There's a park around me. This is very much like China, where you find parks like this in the middle of the city, with the pagoda like that, and a bunch of like exercise machines over there, tables here. Old people dancing and eating breakfast, like me today. It's 85 Bakery, the famous 85 Bakery, um, and got some good foods. So this is a, show you guys real quick, sea salt coffee. That's right, sea salt coffee, aren't you? So sea salt coffee, or nai gai in Chinese, it's like, it's like a cream cheese, savory, not savory, cream cheese, sweet and salty um, foam on top of like milk tea or coffee. It's actually really good. It sounds strange, but it's super good. Oh yeah, so you get a, a bit of that savoriness with that um, sweetness. I like savory stuff and sweet stuff because salt brings out the flavor of sugar and sweets. So yeah, it's not bad. It's really refreshing. Remnants of, of uh, Asia. This is a dantat. Dantat or danta is like the most, my favorite Chinese pastry. This is a traditional Portuguese egg tart the, who the Portuguese brought to Hong Kong and now we, us Asians have been uh, making a lot of dan tap. This is fresh so it's like still stuck here. F. Alright, I'm gonna... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, super fresh. Super fresh. Got a ham and cheese. Just cause I want something savory. Bread, ham, cheese, some sort of mayo. No bad. Four out of ten. And then just because it was fresh made, it's got a mushroom tart. Mushroom pie looking thing. Mushroom pie. Vegan. Mmm. Quite good. Take a little flatbread pizza. Whole wheat bread, mushroom, herbs, cheese on top of whole wheat bread. Mmm, quite tasty. Not the biggest fan of the ham and cheese. Can't waste food though. I feel like I ate so much mushrooms in Seattle. Oh, I got it. I got it. I, I got the egg tart from this. This is creamy. Take a bite. Mmm. Creamy. Custardy. Tastes like a creme brulee. That's a really good way to put it. It tastes like a creme brulee. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. So we're gonna go to one of the biggest Japanese supermarkets in North America called Uwajamaya. Uh, so the big market near here um let's check out goodies we are at uwa jima grocery store big asian grocery store feel it feels really clean like your typical american grocery store rather than an asian grocery store oh look at all this Ooh, look at this six bucks for this great sushi Eel. This is eel. Wow. Wow. Inari. Love me some Inari. Wow. Wow. Look at this sushi. Wow. Look at all these good stuff. Fish. Fresh fish. Wow. Lots of fresh sushi. This. This is not your Kroger brand sushi. 
this is legit. A lot of Japanese foods here. I might pick up a snack or two. If only this was in Nashville. Look how fresh. Look at how fresh this is. Sung, that means fresh. Wow, a bunch of fresh seafood. I, I, I'm guessing this is all sushi grade. Wow, rock fish. More salmon. Wow. Look at the Japanese food. This is Japanese food paradise. Lots of Korean Hawaiian stuff. If you're ever on a budget in Seattle, this has all the stuff. Fried rice, Genesis chicken, lo mein, buns, balsa, burritos. All these Japanese mochi looking things. Ooh, tayaki. It's like a fish shaped bread with red bean paste inside, really delicious, and sandwiches. Shout out to all the weebs out there. Look at all this stuff. Look at all this stuff. Look at that. Lots of gifts and pots over there. There's some wild flavors going on. Salty lychee, peach coca-cola, uh, clear, not this clear matcha. Clear, interesting flavors going on here. Uh, all the better. And you got a whole section just on ramen, instant ramen. Hot ramen mukbang. Mukbang of ramen. Hmm. Just all ramen. Japanese, Korean, Thai, Vietnamese, American. All sorts of ramen. You got creamy seafood, curry. Interesting stuff going on. Miso flavored. You got everything you got here. Korean looking stuff. Uh, yeah, so much stuff. So much ramen. And fried ramen. Yum. Uwa Ji Maya. Amazing grocery store with a pleasant aesthetic. Large parking lot. And good area. I got a surprise for us that we should try out. I'm gonna find a place to sit and we can try this new thing I got. We're back at the entrance. Can't find a place to sit, to sit so we're gonna squat down like I'm in Asia again. Okay, I got something interesting. This is the uh, clear latte matcha green tea. Is that something here? Clear matcha and milk. It's like a matcha latte, it's like green and milky. But this is clear. Let's see how it tastes. But this is just clear. Tastes like matcha. Tastes like a watered down matcha. Like a watered down matcha latte. Definitely tasty preservatives. Definitely tastes like a diet soda. It is light, zero calories, but it's strange. Two out of ten. It tastes like matcha. Is it because I'm squatting? I'm, I'm getting looked at, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Clear matcha latte. Would recommend to try once and never again. Tastes like green tea. No, not really. Tastes like powdered milk and matcha powder and water. A lot of water. Tastes really watered down. But uh, continue moving on. All right, Seattle friends. Wing Luke Museum of Asian Pacific American Experience. Just up my alley. Let's check it out.
welcome to the historic Gecko Company store. This place is an import and export company that opened up here in yeah, so you have the Family Association of the Chinese American Community. Really digging this uh, Asian heritage and cultural representation and respect in Seattle. Wish we had more of this in Nashville. I like this cool Bruce Lee inspired mirror wall. A bunch of mirrors. Did you know Bruce Lee spent a lot of his time in Seattle? Four years. And it's more of a complete system and it's more smooth. By that I mean it's more fluid. Continuity movement instead of one movement, two movement, and then stop. Right the camera the glass of water. One of the galleries just uh, about Asian heritage. Obviously, I'm, I'm really proud of my own heritage, cultural upbringing, because I feel like culture and heritage is one thing that nobody can take away from you. In the uh, 1900s, the Pacific Coast was, was uh, lots of Asians. The here, uh, Japanese, Filipinos, Chinese uh, laborers and things like that here face a lot of discrimination. Um, um, the Chinese Exclusion Act, one of the first um, obvious acts of racism in the USA that excluded Chinese men, um, you know, caused, them, uh, caused all Asian Americans a lot of strife. Uh, World War II caused a lot of Asian Americans a lot of strife. They burned down the first Chinatown and they built it up where it is today. I think that's fascinating to learn about the histories. You know, we learn from our mistakes. Um, so that's why preserving culture, learning about where you came from, the struggles of our forefathers, is beneficial for our own upbringing too. So yeah, be proud of where you're from. Be proud of your skin color, your features, things that you do differently, because those are the things that nobody can ever take away from you. Uh, Wing Luke, one of the first Asian Americans to uh, become like a political, uh, become elected to the political office, grew up in Seattle, and this museum is named after him. As you know, it wasn't too long ago that my own father, uh, grandfathers, forefathers, even myself, experienced these acts of discrimination, and also a lot of the uh, powerful moments of Asian American heritage and progress in America here. So a lot of these things are really fun to look at. And it's these struggles and these successes that we all have to remember. You know, yeah. Being in the Seattle area, take a few minutes of your time to appreciate um, this museum, even if you're not uh, of Asian descent. So I met up with the local and we got the best brunch ever, which is dim sum, Chinese tapas, so small dishes, appetizers, and desserts that will fill you up and make you happy for the rest of the day. Sky View Observatory. Let's go. The beautiful view of Seattle. Wow, wow. Let's see. 
Look at this gorgeous view. Okay. We're on the 73rd floor of Columbia oh, Center. Was the last, yeah, wow. it was when they last I learned lots of things about Seattle <laughs> today. First, um, Bigfoot is from Seattle. <laughs> and second, um, uh, there's a volcano here in St. Helens that erupted in 2008. It's crazy. Oh, this is space. So this tower is taller than the Space mm -hmm. Needle. Wow, so we're not even gonna go in the Space Needle. Wow, look at that bay. Look at that. Look at that mountains. That's the waterfront that you probably went down to last time. I did. It's so pretty. Also made a new friend today, Darian, who's an amazing guide in front. So over there is like Bellevue area. Oh, the one with the big wow. buildings. Or that's Bellevue. Wow, Bellevue right there. So that's there. where Microsoft is. Microsoft is right there, guys. So nice. There's Amazon here, Microsoft here, everything's here. What I love about Seattle is you get the big cities here, then we go hit this way. It's all just nature and mountains <coughs> and water. Coffee shop. Wow. That's a busy harbor. Here's Forks, Washington, home of, home of Twilight. Look guys, Vashon Island. We were just here earlier. Vashon Island. All right. That's Harborview Medical Center, home of Gray's Anatomy. All right. That's all I know about Gray's Anatomy. <laughs> I learned that today too. That it's in Seattle. Yes. <laughs> That's so interesting. This is like just just a little window, but it kind of looks like it's raining. Maybe it does represent. That's so interesting. And does this ever, does this represent the evergreens? <laughs> sure. Let's go with that. Alrighty. Oh yeah, this is Seattle. Seattle. Ooh. Gas Works Park. Wow. So that's a clock? A sundial. So like how do we tell time with this? So before it used to be because of the shadow. Wow. Of your own shadow? Think, like if you scan like Whoa, that's so cool. Like, wow, and then tells you time. Yeah, it's, it's it is about, three o'clock. Yeah, it's about that is so cool. That is so cool. Here, it's three o'clock right now, I'm gonna stand here. It points around three o'clock. That's crazy. That is so cool. Steampunk Village. That is so cool. Wow, look so at yeah, the water. This is Lake Washington. Lake Washington. Wow. Lake Union. Lake, Lake, sorry. Thank Lake you. Union. <laughs> wow. These are houseboats of Seattle. Seattle, like I said, gets weirder by the second. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> and I love it. Imagine living on a houseboat. Dang. Like, what if it overfloods? Like, there's like tidal waves. There's like waves, right? Like, like water gets higher. Like, what would happen? You're, it just floats? They probably still float. I was like, like what's the street stuff? address here? And like, how did it get mail? So much questions. Do they drive? Like so like so much questions. Some people actually do have cars. Like Yeah, that's so them. cool. I would love that. I would love to live there, but that's so interesting. <laughs> also look at this. That's so cool. Molly Moon's ice cream. Got the optimism porter. Don't know what flavor it is, but you know me, wild. So 
we're gonna try it out. Tastes like chocolate. Boom. This is gonna grind oh, wow. on demand for each individual shot that you pull. So every time you have a shot of coffee, it just I grind. grind it like that. <laughs> that's that's actually really cool. But I call that the gateway to fancy town. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Once you grind your beans on demand, you'll never go back. I bet. And then this little dude lives there with a magnet. Oh, uh, oh I see. And then I advise everybody to get yourself a coffee towel, but this is my coffee towel. Okay. Towel. And you're going to tamp a little bit harder than you think. So about 30 pounds of pressure. Right. Wow. Give it a little spin around wow. the edge. And just to even it up. Magnet guy goes right back up there. Wow. This plugs in here. And would you like one shot? One big shot in one cup or oh, I, two little shots? I don't think it, so it's all like, for It's all me. <laughs> okay, here you go. Thank Do you, you take any cream or sugar? Uh, no, thank you. All right, you're a Seattle light. Uh -huh. So we pulled a double. I'm going to hit the double button. If I didn't push hard enough, the water's just going to go blow up right through. I see. If I push too hard, the water's not going to go through at all and I the see. needle's going to peg. If I did it just right, the needle's going to hang out right in the middle. We'll see how I did. So it depends on on how you press the button. How much pressure oh, with this guy? Oh, 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 oh. How hard did I push? With I push this? with that. I see. That's so interesting. And all right, I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it looks great. If you put your hand here, that's a cup warmer. Oh wow, that's genius. That's called crema. Yeah. <laughs> and the real trick to see if I got good crema is if I tilt the cup, the crema should stick to the side. Mm. And it does. Wow, that's fantastic. There you go. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, Bill. Yeah. All right, look at all this crema on this espresso.